out of that kind of discussion is maybe at least a chance to point you towards some good resources for thinking about those things, or to say, just don't go there, or uh, say, go ask your pastor and get your pastor to talk about this because it's really too much for us even to begin to think about. That's actually not a bad piece of advice. Uh, most pastors, I think, welcome theological questions, maybe a chance even to get some of those books off the shelves that they had sticking up there in seminary and don't always get a chance to engage very much in daily parish life. Parish, pastors study pretty hard and uh, then they get into the parish and find that they don't have nearly as much opportunity for that as their seminary, seminary professors thought they would. And it can be a little a little disappointing sometimes not to engage that word that got them there in the first place. So I really do say, everybody, go talk to your pastor. Take him the hardest question you can find. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, what can you tell me about the doors? The doors, they were um, done by a faculty professor's uh, wife, uh, Eva Leo. Uh, who came, she was the first woman, woman in Germany to learn um, how to do this kind of uh, copper metal art. Haha, -ha, I was almost right. Uh, <laughs> I said it was a German woman, yes? Yes, yes, and she's done these doors, the um, piece in the refectory, and uh, some other pieces. Okay, stay with me. Okay, uh... Hello, I'm Sarah Henry. I've written a Bible study this year for the women of the ELCA. It's called To God's Beloved, Paul's Letter to the Romans, and focuses on Paul's letter to the Romans. That might not seem like a huge task, a Bible study for one letter, but Paul's letter to the Romans is 16 chapters long. Each one of those chapters is packed with important theological thinking and helps for us as we think about what life together is like for all of us who have been baptized and filled with the Spirit of God. Um, first off, I want to thank you for all you do for women of the ELCA and for your support of Lutheran Women Today and the Bible Study. It, it means a lot to us and we are so grateful uh, that you continue to get the magazine, that you continue to support us. I want to say two things. One, after Sarah's study is over, the summer, on, uh, next summer, uh, we will do a three-session summer Bible study on prayer. Mm -hmm. And in the summer studies, people have been using those one-day retreats. Mm -hmm. This year it's on uh, seasons in the life of faith, and that's uh, around the life of Mary, the mother of our Lord. But next summer it will be on, on uh, prayer. The, session, the study that starts after that is going to be a topical study, New Testament, uh, around our life together in community. What does it mean to live in community? What does it mean to um, deal with each other in, a, in holy hospitality? What does it mean to be welcoming? What does it mean to be global? But to look a lot at the early church uh, and uh, the, kind of the model for us in the New Testament about living together in community and building one another up. The writers are uh, ELCA pastors, uh, husband and wife. The wife uh, worked at Lutheran School of Theology in Chicago. Her name is Linda Johnson Sayankulo, and she now is a pastor in, in a suburb, suburban church. Her husband is a PhD in New Testament. Uh, he is from Liberia, and he's a Lutheran, and he works in the churchwide office doing outreach and vocation. So, I, and they have kids, and um, teenagers, so they know a little bit about living in community. And, um, <laughs> and she actually has a master's degree in um, family counseling, family systems counseling. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be a really rich study and we're just now meeting with them, talking with them, we had lunch with them to talk about our audience and the different leadership, so. And the last thing I would encourage you to do is if you know people in your congregation who maybe are not part of women of the ELC or a circle, but who might benefit from seeing the magazine. Please encourage them to, have, to take a magazine, uh, to read some of the stories about life and, uh, and, and about prayer. And 
even if they can't go to Bible study, even if they're not really part of a formal circle. I have heard from so many people, including some people, frankly, who are not Lutheran. I mean, I've heard from uh, several women who are Episcopal priests who say they love to go to magazines, the stories of Lutheran, and they're not even in this denomination, but they're greatly moved by reading the material in the magazine, so I just encourage you. Right. Um, in, we have brochures here, I think they're all gone now, about well, you can buy an individual partnership in which you make someone a partner of women of the ELCA. It could be a college student, it could be a friend, it could be a daughter-in-law, it could be a pastor. Um, and they get the magazine as part of it, and they also get cafe, and there will also be another um, e-newsletter that will come to people who are individual partners. And the money from this helps support the organization, particularly outreach and promotion of the organization, but it's also a way to help people who maybe don't identify with the circle to feel like they're still a part of women of the ELCA. They still have a connection, they're still sisters in Christ, even if they're not necessarily able to go to Bible study. You know, maybe they have young kids, or maybe they're disabled and not able to go out very much, but uh, it's, an, it's another way to do it. So we encourage that.